What is up with the title of this thing? Irish Car Bomb Cupcakes? I don't even know what that means, but we're gonna check it out. Jason filmed this and he had a little help and I just want you to give him a little bit of love and respect and check out his video on the new Cooking with Jack 2. Today we're making Irish Car Bomb Cupcakes for our St. Patrick's Day and we're gonna start off with two uh, muffin, just standard muffin tins uh, lined with cupcake liners that are just gold metallic. So they're gonna look like lots of gold. And right. To start off, you need to mix your dry ingredients. We have uh, two cups of flour, two cups of sugar, three-fourths teaspoon of salt, and a teaspoon and a half of baking soda. And I'm going to go ahead and add the Dutch processed cocoa powder. This is just processed with alkali, so it gives it a more red tint, kind of pretty. A more vibrant color, chocolate. We're gonna get this all mixed incorporated. Through. Yeah, that's done. What does that look like when it's all nice and thoroughly incorporated? There? Looks like cocoa mix. Okay. Just the flour, sugar, cocoa. Nice salt. and homogenous mm -hmm. looking. Yeah. Okay. Pretty much. Now we're going to beat the eggs. How many eggs do you have in there? We've got two large eggs. Two large eggs. And two thirds cup of sour cream. Sour cream, okay. Why sour cream? Probably because it adds a bit of richness to it, almost like buttermilk. A lot of cakes will have either buttermilk or sour cream added to them. Um, to add a little bit of, uh, well, a lot of moisture okay. and a little bit of a tang to it. See that mixing? And scrape the bowl. Okay. Why is that? You don't want your, uh, your ingredients will get stuck to the bottom. Okay. And so it's always good to scrape the bowl to make sure everything gets well incorporated. You don't want a bunch of smears of sour cream at the very bottom. Okay. And now we're going to melt a cup of butter with a cup of Guinness Stout. We've got our Guinness and butter mixture melt it down and pour that into a measuring cup so it can kind of cool a little bit as we pour it in and it'll be easier to pour into the mixer mm -hmm. okay do you need to do anything to make sure that it doesn't turn your eggs in there into no, I'm just gonna scrambled like, eggs or I'm gonna cool it slightly and uh -huh. once everything starts mixing i'm gonna turn the mixer on before i start pouring it in so that'll help okay make everything. And Starts like a medium. It's best just to pour it in a slow, steady stream. That way, you don't get anything splattered out of on you. A little bit more than half is what I'm putting in. I go ahead and lock that. And I like to pulse it a couple of, a couple of times so I make sure the you, entire kitchen isn't coated. You don't get any bloom? Yeah. I've done it many times before, so I try to be careful. And once it gets mixed, just give it, let it go. I'm going to scrape it down, make sure everything's getting well incorporated. All right. And the rest of the dry ingredients. And again, kind Pulse of. Pulse it again. Well. There we go. Right. 
you don't want to whip it too much because you'll incorporate too much air. Mm -hmm. When you get too much air in your battery, you get lots of bubbles. Okay. So, which isn't very desirable on a cake. Okay. You're looking for dense moistness. Yeah. This is the pancake pin. And you just fill it from the bottom. It's got a little tip on it. There is a cake pin that I like using the just one size. I don't need anything. Shout out to Jack. I can, yes. I saw it on uh, Jack's. Cooking with Jack. Cooking, cooking with Jack, yes. And I saw his review of it for the pancake, I believe. It was a pancake one. And I, it's really handy when you do mini muffin tins because that's a lot of filling tins. And it's nice just to have a little squeeze bottle mm -hmm. that you can refill. And you're going to want to fill the cupcake liners about a little over half to three-fourths full. That way you don't get any spillover. Mm. See, and there you can just squeeze and go straight to the next tin without having to scoop anything. You get drips all over the top of your tin that get baked on and you can never get off. You can see there's a couple little air bubbles that are coming up to the surface across the top. Mm -hmm. So by tapping them on the counter, you're going to force the air bubbles up to the surface so that they're not baked into the cake so they're nice and dense. We're going to place these in a 350 degree preheated oven and they will bake for 17 minutes. I'm probably going to check them midway through since I'm putting them on opposite side of the oven and top and bottom and we'll rotate them so that make sure they get evenly baked. Okay. All right, we're going to make the ganache filling that's going to go into our cupcakes and this is uh, flavored with Jameson Irish whiskey. This is two thirds cup of heavy cream that we're going to heat up. And you're just going to don't bring it up to boiling. Just need to scald it, get it heated through so that we can melt the chocolate chips. And this is eight ounces of semi-sweet chocolate. And I'm gonna pour this directly over the chocolate chips. And kind of let that sit for a minute. And now we can start slowly whisking the heavy cream into the chips. And this is basically how you make chocolate ganache. So we're just going to whisk this until all the chips are melted down and nice and smooth. What happens if you don't get it just right and say there's not enough left a heat residual heat left in there to... I'm going to put a little bit of boiling water on and set the bowl over the top of it and then you basically just set your bowl over the top. Finish it off. And and this is also good to keep it at the right consistency. Mm -hmm. If you want to use ganache for pouring. So it's a little, yeah, you yeah, can see you in there, it's a little lumpy in there. So it's all nice and smooth now. Okay. No more lumps. All the way Silky. And now I'm going to add, the original recipe calls for two teaspoons of Jameson Irish whiskey. The first time I made it, I tried it with the two teaspoons and I didn't get much of the whiskey flavor at all. So I'm doing about two and a half tablespoons. I bumped it up quite a bit. So it has a nice strong whiskey flavor. Mm -hmm. You can use a large pastry tip to kind of Set a little hole across the tops of these, kind of a guide to dig the cake out. So you've got a little spot to fill with ganache. And you can just take the tip of a spoon and scoop out a little bit of cake. All right, so we're gonna pour our ganache into the centers of the cupcakes. I'm going to make the Bailey's Irish buttercream. I'm making it kind of the way that my mother's American um, buttercream is made. One cup of butter to one cup of shortening. And this is five cups of powdered sugar. 
and then it calls for six tablespoons of Bailey's Irish cream. And this is very important to start slow with this because powder sugar will flop. Once it's ready, it's all nice and whipped, has a good consistency. So I'm going to start putting it in my decorating bag that I have a decorative tip on. You could just spread this on with a offset spatula or spoon. We're just going to finish these, this off with some little green sugar sprinkles. And that's it.